Game jams are not easy, yet despite all odds I managed to win my first game jam. But just how exactly did I accomplish that? Going into this jam I had high hopes, but by the end of it I was at my limit. So if you end up liking the video, consider subscribing. This video took over 24 hours to make and I would really appreciate the support. Games take a long time to make. Like a really long time. That's why you don't see AAA game devs pumping out games yearly. Oh wait, that's why you don't see good game devs pumping out games yearly. They need inspiration, require lots of effort, and are generally a tough thing to complete. Now what if I told you that game devs purposefully subjected themselves to stupidly short time constraints for the sole purpose of having fun? Well in essence, that's what a game jam is. A period of time where you jam out games, or something. I had always wanted to join one, but never found the right opportunity. Until recently, when my friend, uh... Mr. Milk invited me to his game jam. It was his first time hosting one, so I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to be my first game jam as well. This all happened at around the beginning of January, and the game jam was slated to start January 3rd. Everything was going perfectly until I remembered that I had my wisdom teeth surgery that same day. I hoped that I would recover enough to at least start developing the game by then, and luckily when the time came, I did just that. The theme was revealed to be, you are what you eat. I was actually pretty happy with this theme, but I was kind of lost for ideas for a bit. I spent probably an hour or two kind of just thinking about what I wanted to do. The first idea was this blob that swallows stuff and turns into what it swallows. Wait, that's just Kirby. After reinventing the wheel, I continued to brainstorm. After a couple of more scrapped ideas, I ended up with sort of a compromise to the theme. I basically had the idea for this guy who eats spaghetti and meatballs and then he turns into spaghetti and meatballs and he has like this nightmare he's trying to escape. The natural conclusions that I made were that as a meatball you could slide down slopes and that you could use your spaghetti strands to sort of hook yourself around. The guy also ordered soda, so I tried figuring out how to incorporate that, but the only thing I could come up with is that you could phase through certain walls, but then I thought, well, if you can't change characters, it's kind of pointless to include that since you might as well replace the walls with thin air. So I scrapped including soda for now. Right after coming to terms with my character designs, I started drafting my levels. In the process of drafting my levels, I decided to bring back the soda implementation, now making it such that that if you are in a soda zone, you cannot hook with your spaghetti. At this point, I was really liking the mechanics and ideas, so I continued drafting the levels. And after a short time, I had thought of three levels and one tutorial. I originally planned on 10 levels, but then I immediately scrapped that after realizing that I want to keep my sanity. After creating the level layouts, I finally started making the game. This was my first time ever working on an actual game within a game jam, so I thought it would be fitting to use a proper engine this time. After my recent video, I knew that this would be the perfect opportunity to use Godot. I actually learned from my last video from a super awesome comment that I've been mispronouncing Gado. According to the official Gado page, it's pronounced Gado. So yeah, there's that. And for a short disclaimer, if I end up mixing the two up in the video, I'm kind of still in the process of getting them right, so I apologize for that. I ended up working on some simple platforming physics and ended up getting a very simple demo done. Cool. Now I have the basic functionality of every platformer game ever. I thought that at this rate, I would be done the game in no time. If only that were true. Anyways, I ended up working on trying to implement the hook next, which in hindsight was kind of a mistake to attempt on my first day right after a wisdom teeth surgery, but eh, whatever, you live and you learn. I ended up looking at a couple of different tutorials, but I didn't want to just copy them line for line, so I kind of just tried mashing stuff together until it worked. By the end of it, I was able to get the hook basics done. A raycast from your player that could follow your mouse and detect if it was colliding and if you were clicking. This actually took a while because the damn thing wouldn't follow my mouse and I got so angry. Oh wait, I just need to set it in this direction and boom. Okay, well that was frustrating, but I'm sure I won't ever be frustrated again. I mean, come on, getting frustrated and making games, the two are practically the furthest apart they could ever be. Now I was down to business. Since I'm in high school, I had only one more week left of winter break, so this game jam was kind of the perfect way to wrap that up. Today I mainly just continued to tweak and implement the hook physics since I didn't really have any to begin with. I ended up using this tutorial as a reference and basically continued to try mashing it inside of my game code until I got it kind of working, albeit it was kind of janky. By now I had some pretty good movement and you could actually see where you were hooked. Never mind the fact that you were able to slide when you were hooked, which um, you know, was totally intentional. Incidentally, at this point, I realized my code had turned into spaghetti, which, you know, was also totally to match the theme of the game. I decided that tomorrow I would actually clean this stuff up and actually make all the code much more readable and easier to maintain. I would include a basic finite state machine, which would just manage switching from ground to air to hooked, etc. But yeah, tomorrow would be a day to tie up loose ends and finally perfect the physics. <laughs> so introducing states caused a whole new host of bugs, but I eventually ended up squashing all of them. 
Well, most of them. Essentially, I continued programming the physics, fixing strange edge cases, i.e. rare occurrences where the player wouldn't move properly. So that was fun, totally. By the end of fixing all the physics, I started to implement the soda zone, which I decided that on top of making the player unable to hook things, should make the player feel more buoyant. I combined this along with a suggestion from my friend Yabo that should make the player turn from spaghetti to soda, making the feature actually make sense. Up to this point, I actually learned so much about Godot that I started to feel like a pro. That is until I tried something new and then I felt like the weight of seven stars crashing into- Honestly though, Godot so far had become really fun to work with and really cleared any confusions or fear I had going into it. My final addition today was Coyote Time and a jump buffer to make the game much more forgiving. Basically what they do is that Coyote Time lets you jump when you're slightly off a ledge and a jump buffer makes it so that you don't need to press space at the exact millisecond when you hit the ground. I ended up getting the soda zones working and the physics finally started to feel right. I realize now that the benefit of finishing this game would mean that for future platformers, I could just, you know, steal my own code and avoid all this torment. So today was the day I finally stopped neglecting the art. I originally planned on using some free open game art assets, but I couldn't find any that actually fit the theme of the game. Mind you, I didn't really have a theme in mind, but I then decided to look on itch.io to see if I could find anything else there, but I still ended up deciding that using someone else's artwork just wouldn't do justice to my game's vision. That's when I decided to undertake the grueling task of actually making everything from scratch. I consider myself to actually be pretty bad at art, maybe okay at pixel art, so I was worried for how this would turn out. Surprisingly though, the art actually came out good-ish? I was actually really impressed with how it came out, considering my own skills. I then decided to implement them into Godot's tile map, which now leads me to the designated point in the video where I will rant. I f***ing hate- Nah, I'm just playing. For real though, I don't really like Godot's tile map system. It was very clunky and difficult to use and overall was just really unintuitive. Of course, this is just me personally speaking. I decided to check out Godot 4.0 and did see that the tile map was improved upon, so that's a relief. I won't explicitly mention when, but many times when making this game, the tile map just kind of broke. Unfortunately, I had to remap the collision data and I did all this many times before realizing that I could save the data as a template. That part is definitely my bad, but either way, the tile map was just not the best. Do not, however, let it discourage you from the whole of Godot, which is, like I said, very fun to use. That's all for this designated rant time. Today I got most of the tile art done and even worked on the shader texture for the soda zone, which just simply made the screen tinted blue. There's pretty much zero programming done today. Burn. Yeah. <laughs> Today I planned on making the levels. Before that, I made the executive decision to make the game start in full screen so that seemingly everyone would get the same perspective, thus streamlining level design. I then got started on making the tutorial and quickly realized that I need to implement an auto tile tile set if I plan on finishing this game in less than a year. Luckily, this was pretty quick to do and I got the tutorial level done. At this point, I realized that the player can't really tell where they can hook. I tried detecting if the mouse was colliding with the player's raycast, but after failing to do this for like 30 minutes, I decided to just update the cursor if the raycast was or wasn't colliding with a wall, i.e. if it could reach a wall. This was unfortunately all the progress I made that day because, well, I decided to go hang out with friends since after all, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy or something. Hey, yo, the pizza here. Stop! I'm not gonna lie, at this point I started feeling the pressure of the deadline. Today was pretty crucial for progress since tomorrow I would be going back to school and would not have much more time to work on the game with exams coming up. I then proceeded to painstakingly add each level to the game and I also learned how to use Godot's scene system to effectively create the levels. I just want to mention how much more difficult level design is than you would imagine. You actually have to make the levels make sense and you have to make them fun. More on that later. For the later half of today, I finally created the art for the spaghetti and soda. I was kind of dreading this part since I didn't want to learn how to animate things, but the whole experience was not too bad. I then quickly decided to draft the starting intro of the game. I kind of did a cop out and decided to use text to narrate the beginning because, well, I was running out of time and did not want to learn how to animate a cutscene. What the hell? I pretty much planned on today being the last day I got any significant work done since I didn't want to continue it tomorrow and risk failing to meet the deadline. The first thing I did was I let my brother playtest the game. Like I mentioned earlier, his input gave me a lot of good feedback on the level design. From his playthrough alone, I got a wealth of knowledge. Lots of things about the level designs were unintuitive and obscure. Some physics elements also were just a little bit off and required a bit of tweaking. I managed to use his input to significantly improve the game and I thank him for that. Everything else today was pretty uneventful because I just had to work on the UI element, which 
switch. These include the death screen, the ending, and the title screen. I also had to work on the sound effects, which I'm not gonna lie, was very f boring. Today was overall difficult for me because I was exhausted with school coming back and having worked on this game every day for the past week, totaling nearly 24 hours. I was rushing last minute additions and I was just kind of half-assing my way to the end, but I made sure that the game was at least playable and would still be a full experience. My previously mentioned friend, Yabo, had agreed to help me with the title, which required a little script to make the background spin. For the music and sound effects, I just went on YouTube to look for some royalty-free ones. And then I did it. I finished the game. The sweet relief was amazing. On the last day, all I did was give out some beta copies to my friends to make sure everything ran smoothly. I then updated the itch.io page, and after a couple of bugs were squashed, the game was submitted. I then patiently waited, and in the meantime, started school homework. I learned that the deadline was extended to allow for some last minute submissions, which I was okay with since I wouldn't have made any meaningful progress with a couple of extra hours anyway. Later that day, I got into a VC and watched Lactose play my game. Here's a clip from that night. Lactose, do you like the sound of the, of the spaghetti hook? Like the rubber? Yeah, what'd you, what'd you use? I just used a, a free Finally. sound effect online called getting stuck. That's, that's all, it, that's all I said. I don't know. Whoa! I don't know what that means. Why? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Strangely enough, Lactose actually experienced a few UI bugs, which made me panic. But luckily, he didn't seem to care too much. It's really strange that this bug happened considering none of my friends had it, but I figured out that I just needed to configure some Godot settings. Basically, I just had to tick some boxes that would rescale the game for any resolution. If you end up playing it, let me know how it goes. I won't do a playthrough of the game in this video, so link to the game in GitHub are in the description. This experience was nothing short from amazing. I got to learn so much, whether it was about Godot, general game development, my breaking point, everything. It was so much fun and I got to see the other great games made in this jam. But that's not what you're here for. What you're here for is the results. Yes, I won. My game actually received pretty positive results, more so than I expected. It was pretty great knowing that all my effort in the game was rewarded with winning first place. There were some really great games in this jam, so it is truly an honor to win. I definitely plan on joining some more game jams in the future, but for now I'm beat. Check out Lactose's channel and wishlist his game on Steam night and morning. Links are in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like the video Video if you enjoyed. It helps me out tremendously and you can always unsubscribe after. Also, check out my Twitter. I've been using it more often. It's been Froggish. See you guys later.